Today we're going to do a very special painting together. It's a lone man standing in a storm with waves crashing around him in acrylic. I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can create... <clears throat> So sorry, that was so oh. weird. I had no frog in my throat before I started <laughs> live. <laughs> so this is a live stream painting class, though this video will be available after the stream for you to be able to paint along and paint with. I explain every part of the painting process so that you can create this exact project for yourself at home following along. So I paint a thing, you paint a thing, I paint a thing, you paint a thing. At the end of that, we have kind of basically the same thing, mm -hmm. not carbon copies not clones because this is art and you should be in your painting and so yours should not look exactly like mine it should look like yours and mine will look like mine and that will be perfect on the mic is my husband john hello in our uh striving to accept our individuality and our uh fabulous differences uh he's going to be making sure that as i'm explaining my painting process journey that the camera's pointing at what I'm talking about, that you can really see the color mixes, that you can see what's going on. He also uh, makes sure that I, um, uh, uh, what is it you do? You cat heard me. Yeah, can't push <laughs> buttons, follow You know, just along. whatever you guys need. So if there's a question during the show, John brings that to my attention because the original show, this part, if you're here right now, is a live stream. And then it's for replay. Whether you're on replay, a premiere, or a live stream, here's some things to know about painting online. Very important tip that I think we should all know, which <laughs> is that during the drying time, um, it is important that you remember that I'm on your clock. I'm on your time. I paint at your speed. So if I'm getting ahead of you or you're getting overwhelmed or anything weird is happening, you push pause on me. Mm. <laughs> Pause me, stop me, you can do that. The live chat will keep going, everything will keep working. And then you don't hit play till you're ready to go. Though we are starting to do our, uh, if you would like to share the painting that you do today with us live at the end of the show, um, there is a way to do that. The mods are here to help you do that. But basically like say you're done and you would like to show me, you can submit it to our email support at theartsherpa.com, you know, with a little header, like painting for the live show. And then um, give your name or whatever name you want set on air and a good picture of your painting and the mods will get it to us in Skype. And then you might get to see your painting on the show at the end. Do you have to do that? No, but we did that last time and we all had a really good time. So we're doing it again today. But the mods will explain this further. They are the butterflies with wrenches in the live chat. Doesn't that sound good? That sounds good. Also, I, because I know everyone takes in information differently, I have written instructions on the community tab and in the group and on the page over on Facebook. So different ways to do that. So, All right. Now, this particular painting is about, uh, I don't know, stuff that's going on right now. Uh, a lot of times um, I kind of paint to what's happening in the world. <clears throat> And lately, I've been really thinking about uh, what's been going on with men's mental health and also uh, what's been going on with climate disruption. And this paint, this design kind of brought all that together. One, because I think that um, uh, as we're all uh, changing our understanding of each other and what it means to be human and what it means to be connected and compassionate as a human being, um, a lot of guys are going through it uh, just globally. I don't know if you've noticed these statistics, but men are having a really, really hard time. And um, some of what I read that I thought was super compelling that inspired the design of this piece was that guys were talking about the isolation of, of being a man and how sometimes um, it can be very lonely and there isn't a lot of, you know, like, hugs and touch and that kind of like really connected emotional community and so if you've got a guy in your life you know ask him how he's feeling ask him how he's doing and remember in men depression can present as anger mm. I thought that was interesting anxiety and depression can present as ang anger so if you have a young man or a man in your life who's um becoming angrier what they may actually be struggling with is depression and it's always okay. You can be the toughest guy in the world. The toughest guys in the world absolutely do seek mental health. Mm -hmm. They do seek mental health help. So that's my, that's my mission statement on this painting. Let's go over the materials. All right. You guys ready for the materials? All right. This is an 11 by 14 stretched canvas. I thought that was a nice size for this piece. There is a traceable on the website. I don't expect you to draw, though I will show you how I drew this. You can use the traceable and I'll tell you when. On the palette right now, I have Mars Black, Thalo Green, Cad Yellow Medium, Thalo Blue, 
burnt sienna, um, ultramarine blue, and titanium white. And that is all I'm planning to be using on this. Isn't that awesome? Wow. That's awesome. It's awesome. Awesome blossom. Now, I think initially I may take a little bit of my burnt sienna. I'm going to put another little bloop here. Did you see me bloop? I did. I blooped. And a little ultramarine blue, and I'm going to make a gray. It's a sort of an interesting soft, neutral, soft gray. And I'm going to paint the entire canvas um, with this. John, do you want to throw up a step? Sure. All right. So the step, the first step, as as is often, not always, but as is often, is painting the entire canvas a solid color. And I'm going to start with a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, which make a nice gray. I should make a short video on how to make gray with these two colors, shouldn't mm. I? That would be very cool of me. <laughs> that would be very cool. Now, I kind of put them one to one. So there I may need to add oh, about half of that blue to this to really gray it where I want it in that blue gray range. To get the good gray, you've got to be a little biased ultramarine over the brown. Oh, that's a nice amount. And I'll just kind of get this on my palette from here. And then I will smear it around with my big brush. And we'll see how far that goes. If I need to mix some more up, I will. How is everybody doing today? Good. I was just getting everything situated here and looking around and seeing everybody. Wow, that's cool how you do that, though. <laughs> just, it's a blue-gray, kind of like a deep denim, I feel. And it's just a, a light color that you just need over the whole surface. This is just going to help our very uh, thrashy, wonderful, foamy ocean have depth. We're going to do some palette knives today, too, guys. Ooh. Palette knives. Should be fun. Mm. Oh, Heather C says something very interesting. Depression is anger turn inward. Uh, I like that. I can and that. Uh, Ter Tercia says, hi, Cinnamon. I like to see you from the start. Thanks for your tutorials from South Africa. Hello. You know, in my life, I have had many friends that have hailed from South Africa. It's a big place. There's a couple people over there. There's a few people. There's, there, yeah, there's, there's a few people. We had um, a family that uh, moved to my school when I was younger, and they brought their whole family uh, to the States. And so I had that was my first friend from South Africa, and by no means my last. It's sort of interesting when you sort of, you know, realize how small our little globe is. Mm -hmm. It's a tiny little speck in a giant sea or void empty space and we're all so lucky to be here together oh thank you heather c now once i have that whole canvas covered it doesn't by the way it can be totally streaky streaky is completely okay yeah completely completely fine it looks really cool it looks denim-y denim-y and it is denim -y. on instructables once i i i did a thing on how to paint faux denim it was really strange on how to paint oh. on denim remember that and i do it was weird it did really well too there. it blew up big but i was just like it, it just instructables it was just strange i just didn't get back over there all right i'm gonna dry this and right. we're gonna put in our next step okay you guys are doing great take a deep breath be like I'm okay. This is art. This is just coloring. It's not. It's not intense, and no one's gonna tell me any anything mean. They're gonna be so nice, and I'm just in my studio coloring today. And what a beautiful thing that is. This is really nice. Thank you guys for all coming and hanging out. It's nice to see everybody in chat today. Oh man. Thank you, Heather C. Thank you for everybody for for coming and hanging out. We really, really appreciate it. I know that we have people traveling. To, you know, all over the country today, driving and flying and be safe and all of your travels. Um, big hugs to everybody. Uh, check out our website, theartsherpa.com, because you can find out all sorts of cool stuff over there. Um, support at theartsherpa.com with any questions, or if you're painting along at the end of the show, you'd like to... Uh, uh, there it goes. Okay. I just... Uh, if you'd like to... You'd like, oh, sorry. And at the end of the show, you would like to... Um, what do you call it? Uh, show you our picture, then send it to support at theartsherpa.com, and hopefully we'll be able to get to the, all of them by the end of the show. That's our, our goal. Is we're going to try to show them at the end of the show to see what we can do. Uh, thank you, Virgo. Thank you, everybody, for all the wonderful comments in here. Uh, and... Uh, 
and the uh, let's see here I'm looking into what it says we'll make sure that we go over those color mixes here as well just a second what was the color mix you used there cinnamon ultramarine blue and burnt umber make okay, this great. fabulous color we're gonna get into some really cool muted colors that sometimes are kind of hard to know how to mix so you're gonna come away with like mm, i got some cool water icelandic mixes going on isn't that lovely mm. isn't that lovely um another tip for you if you're here for the live is to um take your chat setting off of top messages and put it on all otherwise it'll send them to you out of order and sometimes the chat won't make sense <laughs> i don't know it's something i've noticed when i forget to do it where things are like out of order it's when i generally miss questions is when that is there now i'm gonna take a little bit of i'm just going to sketch kind of like a thought of something i've got a dritz chalk tool this is actually for uh sewing and doing tailoring it's a tailor's chalk tool but it's fantastic they have it at joann's um honestly sometimes getting it at joann's is the only place to get it at a good price because every once in a while amazon will jack up the price <laughs> like a ridiculous amount <laughs> you know how amazon is it's like oh do you all want this let's charge you a million dollars for it so uh we don't have it on our own art store you do have to go to joanne's i recommend them if you don't have that as an option or you don't have access to this kids chalk works just the same this is just kind of fancy and convenient i'm going to come over here to the right hand side and in the lower right i'm going to kind of make a little lower line and i'm going to just talk about my rocks going off the um, screen. And I like to make them jaggy and just think about their shape. I, I think about how my guy has gotten out here on this ledge. I know John has have been through moments like this in his life. I think this painting, um, I think I've used some of the stuff that you've been through pretty heavily. Yeah. I might want to make this a little bit smaller just so that um, there's lots of room to put my figure. You know. Well, I, I think it can it can speak to an experience that isn't uniquely male, but oftentimes is. Um, you know, sort of having to to feel like you're standing there weathering the storm alone. Um, I think it's an interesting. Uh, you know, sometimes you got to do it in a suit. <laughs> well, I think sometimes guys end up in the suit when they're in this experience. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of scaling out how large I want my figure. I'm not really going to draw him actually at this stage. <laughs> I'm going to make a little sort of T here to say, I think my guy is going to take up about this much space. I will be drawing him later, but I've got a lot to paint. I just want to know how much general p figure that he's going to take in because he needs to feel small in the storm, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. And so when I'm trying to scale something out on a canvas, when you, when you work in uh, computer spaces and then you switch to canvas spaces, one of the interesting things is, is you can do the mathematical scaling, but what you'll find is sometimes when you work with it kind of tactically, I'm gonna think about the size of my wave. I like to do these little preliminary sketches and what they help me do and what they can help you do is before you're deep in the painting, kind of create an object relationship scale. You know, so that you're not, you know, five hours in and then go, that figure is too big. Uh, yeah. That wave is too small. It happens to us. Happens to me. Happens to everybody. So these weird little sketch lines um, can be really great. Now, you can trace over your figure and do the high detail if you want to with your traceable now. It's probably easiest to transfer at this stage of the painting, those lines. Um but since I'm doing so much painting here, I'm going to kind of not put him into a little bit later. So his drawing segment will be later. But if you're using the traceable, this is a good stage to use it. You can always reset it as you go. Let's call that a step. All right. You ready for the mm -hmm. third step? I'm ready for the next step of our lives. All right. So, um... The other thing is, you guys, remember, you can, su you can submit your result, your painting results with me here. Um, you can, uh, the moderators, I gave the moderators some instructions, so they'll share those with you on how to submit your paintings, going to talk to you about it, and we might show them at the end of the show if you would be into that. All right, let's begin by kind of blocking in some more color. We've got our rocks here, we've got kind of a wave space here, and we've got kind of a dark stormy sky back here. 
I'm going to grab my big scruffy brush. Mm. See my scruffy brush? It is scruffy. This is a number 20 Raphael d'Artigny Bright. So bright is the shape of the brush. The brush is made of hog bristles. These are, this is from um, like boar bristles. And 20 is the size, it's about inch wide, and the company's Artigny, but you can find these brushes made by many companies under many names. I like this one, but you know, sometimes my favorite isn't the best one for y'all. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of my black and ultramarine blue together, and I'm gonna come up here in this upper corner and start to sort of give it some real black on these little edges. See how we're just, we're giving some, yeah. Nice uh, depth. Then as I'm coming through, I will add some white. This is a traditional Payne's Gray. You could just use Payne's Gray, but we're gonna use this and I'm gonna just brush this through. Oh, what color is that? I only remember that it's 421 in the Gel Mermaid collection. <laughs> I don't remember what they called it, but I remember its number because I wanted to get it again next time I came in. And I was like, I better remember what that color was. I'm bringing a little more gray here. And it's okay to bring the sky color past where you think you're going to put the wave. Um, and the reason for that is, is that you get nice layering. Oh, look at that. And we just, you know, stormy sky. Yeah. I can bring a little white in and kind of do short little strokes through here across to kind of imply storminess. As I come over uh, a little further to the right, I'm gonna add a smidge of green into this mix, interestingly enough, and still go white. Can you see how that's gone a little green? Yeah. This is that storm. Just bringing some light in from that corner. Not too, not too bad. Not too terrible. Let's call that a step. We did that upper sky. Yeah. Look at us go. It's gorgeous. Just whipping through. Honestly, this is one of those paintings that is both easier than you think and harder than you think, but never in the painting where you think it's going to be any of those things. <laughs> now I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my um, phthalo green together in a smidge of my burnt sienna. And we're gonna come here and maybe a little brighter, but we'll come in with this little blue. I'll probably have to gray this out a bit. But down here above the wave, curving up, we're gonna just put this like these little hints of uh, color. You can see that there's a curve, a sweep to the brush stroke coming through here. The sweep implies directionality. The other thing I can do is I can take a little bit of phthalo blue and burnt sienna. And if you go a little more into the burnt sienna, you get a very nice stormy green too. I have a little white still on my brush. Oh, more than I thought. I said a little and then I had a lot, but that's okay. Sometimes that'll happen. You'll be working. You'll be like, where did that paint come from? It's sneaky paint. Got to watch for sneaky paint. Now I've got a lot of white and everything that's going to come on here. But since I have this nice gray sort of holding my space, you know, what's great about this is that, um, even if the canvas underneath is showing through, your painting will still look finished and resolved. It'll give you a slightly more uh, professional look than you might expect. I'm gonna go back into my ultramarine blue and Mars black, much more blue. And I'm gonna come here with my brush and just kind of, and I've got some white on here. And we're going to begin to talk about 
the storm at the top of the wave. Yeah. See how these are short strokes? There's the brush, there's the load, and I'm making little strokes like curve. I sometimes do the corner. I try to change directions, and I do all these things so that we can really see the storm of the sea. This is my darkest value in the water. Mm. It's easy to build up, but it can be really challenging to, uh, well, actually nothing is, it's actually not challenging to darken or lighten with acrylic. It's all pretty easy, Yeah, <laughs> but it can feel overwhelming. So now my brush strokes, look how random and messy they are. They're very they really random and messy random. are. Yeah. They're random and messy because this is a stormy day. I'm going to go ahead. I, I know where my scale is, so I'm going to go ahead and put my water behind him. If you're doing the traceable, you just work around your lines carefully. Or if you want to go be like, nah, I'm going to be messy now, then you'll be putting him back in once this is all painted in later when I sketch it in. So either is okay. Dad? Yes? No? We're here working, buddy. We're live, buddy. That's okay. <laughs> Kids going, Dad. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs> We're still here. Look, this is very just messy and silly. It's it's just a mishmash. <coughs> now, it can be disturbing, scary even, to be messy when you're new at painting because it feels like painting is a very uh, thoughtful, particular process to a lot of people. Like like every line but really painting is about for me at least and hopefully for for the people who paint with me it's about finding a space to relax and allow all those parts of your brains you never take out to have a minute to enjoy themselves yeah there we go i love it do we have any questions See here, I was going back. I was just. I'm going to add this lighter color through here and no, through here. You want to just re regroup on what all the colors there you're using are, so they could. Ultramarine blue, Mars black, Thalo green, Cad yellow medium, Thalo blue, burnt sienna. This was a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, but we used it all up for the background. And there's our titanium white. It really seems that a lot of uh, a lot of folks are, are relating to this. So that's it's really nice. That is good. That's what I hope because I think we all get there. Don't we all sometimes oh, find yeah. ourselves just overwhelmed in the world by everything? I, I'll tell you something. Um, every time I see um, an update on the weather and temperature and stuff, it, it's a, it can feel a little overwhelming because what can we individually do, right? I think we're all past the point where we realize that it is our good or bad recycling that has caused huh. this. I mean, not that we shouldn't recycle, we should. But that it's it's about corporate or large, you know, large entities decisions that are really impacting us on our climate. Mm -hmm. So really what we have to do, I think, this is just my two cents and you can agree or disagree. Yeah, it's totally fine with me. <laughs> but I think what we have to do is uh, really write our representatives from like the local to the state to the government level wherever you are your I, I, however your government listens to you contact them and say i don't care where you are in whatever crazy political ideology we have going on this year right it seems to change year by year doesn't matter where you are in the spectrum of political ideology this is a moment you have to rise to this is a moment you're going to actually have to do the job you're paid for. Mm. You're going to have to meet this moment, not the catastrophe, but the moment now. This is the year. I don't know. They seem pretty responsive to like trends. Look at Popeyes. They put up girl dinner. <laughs> you know, and that was just from a TikTok trend. Change that whole corporate menu. So I yeah. think we do have more power than we think. Um, I'm just going to continue to paint light down here. And I think, and then again, when it comes to like, you know, being there for men and their mental health, I think, again, it's about having conversation and talking to the people in your lives. And if you see somebody struggling, um, you know, say, hey, I see you. Can I help? Is there anything I can do? I'm going to come down here. I think we definitely want this to be darker down here. We're going to take a little more black and a little more blue. And we're going to come down here and darken that up just a bit.
Here lots we go. Of, lots of agreement from everyone here. Okay. Oh, this is a great one. Virgo rules. What's the difference between CAD paints and other paints? The pigment. So in all paint, all paint, the difference between the paints, costs, stuff like that. When you see paints having different price on the same size tube, and it can be very different. It can be like $3 for this tube and $60 for this tube and they're the same size. Generally, that's the pigment. Cadmium pigments um, are a more expensive pigment to make because they're more dangerous for the paint maker. Once they're coated and bound into the paint, and they're as long as we keep it out of our mouths and out of our lungs and really just out of like out of our lungs is the uh -huh. big one. Um, we're pretty good, but when you're making it, it's powdered. And so that's a thing and it's, it's expensive to get. Um, the, there's been a bunch of studies looking at it to see if artists were problematic, uh, on environmental issues. And if, as long as you're disposing your paint water, okay, you're good. And, um, in student paints, they don't have any cadmium pigment. It, they'll call it cadmium, but it'll also have this little word next to it called hue. And hue is the, uh, paint world's way of saying to you, uh, we didn't use any lapis lazuli because that's crazy expensive and it doesn't bind well in acrylic. But uh, we made a color we think is real close to lapis blue. Mm. Right. You'll know you bought lapis blue because you'll have bought a tube of oil and it will cost $600. You won't accidentally buy lapis. <laughs> You're going to notice it at the register. Hard. Yeah. I think I've seen some get up to 1400 in the handmade paints so like real pigments um you you'll notice because like their costs will go way up mm -hmm. fast 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 but if it's like everything is sort of the same price in the same line that's generally uh an eco economic decision that the makers made and it won't have any dangerous pigments it won't have any rare pigments it will just be either pure pigments like phthalo which is inexpensive for them to make or titanium or it'll be a hue of the pigment was that a good answer i feel I like that so. was a great answer uh oh diana of air design says this composition reminds my feelings after my dad passed away last yeah, year it was a difficult that. and scary time and on top of that we were missing him and there's so much that this makes me feel i'm one i'm so sorry for your loss and i'm glad that this painting, I hope, is tapping you into, like, some good work through feelings. I do. Mm -hmm. um, but thank you for sharing your story with me, and I'm very sorry for your loss. Let's call this a step. I'm kind of trucking along a little slow today because I realize some of us might be in our feelings, and I'm, I'm going to try not to rush you. Yeah. You know, usually I paint at, like, speed. <laughs> and everyone's like, slow down. Slow way down. I think I'm going to get an angle brush to put in my, um, this first layer painting. And I'm going to do that because it's going to give me a good edge. Here's one. Oh, no, that's a bright. I went to an angle. Here's an angle. It's a small angle. It's a half inch angle. Um, so when I say angle brush, it's just because it's cut at an angle. And I'm going to paint my rocks in initially with just pure black. So I'm going to come on this brush's edge. And I like to use it to sort of really create the edges and, you know, uh, roughness of my rocks. Mm, yeah. Um, my dad's actually, I kind of relate to what you were saying. My dad's going through something and we are, this made me think of my dad a little bit too. Yeah, I can see that. Makes me think of John. Uh, my husband had to live away from home for a period of time for work. And uh, he was far away. He he was uh, in China manufacturing uh, video games. Arcade games. Arcade games. And vintage tube hand-wired guitar amplifiers. Yes. Which was very cool. But he was very far away, and there was a lot of pressure, and he was really isolated and alone. And at that time, the company's whole future and the video game company's whole future was about what he was able to do there. And it's not like John had ever been to China. I'm going to paint this whole thing black. So that's why I can talk to you guys about stuff. We're just painting it all black. Brush strokes basically going from right, upper right, down to lower left. Um, he, uh, yeah, you were there really alone. And we had just had a baby and he was just born. Um, and it was, so it was a really hard time for him to be away because he was missing everything with our first child. And there was health stuff going on. It was it was crazy because you you don't at the time you don't think about how 
you know, in, in this case, what happened was is that our little video game company, we we lost our uh, Korean-based manufacturer, and they were like, here, we have some contacts in China. You can go manufacture there. And so uh, they- This just, was like 20 years ago. Yeah, like 19, a, really. This was like a long time ago. Uh, yeah. Uh, like 19 years ago. And so- um, you know, our little company was like, well, okay, we think we can do this. Uh, so they handed me a big old wad of money. And I took my my lead tech engineer who spoke Chinese because he took it in college. And, you know, his uh, is, uh, it's, you know, it's uh, not, not, not so great, but uh, his was, was way better than mine. But even so, we stumbled around in China, and that was a lot of fun. But it was crazy that we risked all that stuff, not even thinking that it would be, you know, a big deal. But it was. I don't know. Waxing. Um, oh, this is a good question. That's good waxing, though, because it's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, Nicola, ha Nic Nicola had a great question about, um, gosh, I hope I say that correctly. You've been here so much. I so love seeing you. Uh, what's the difference between a Series 1 and a Series 3 paint? Uh, it is um in it, it can actually go uh uh beyond series three it can actually get up to nine um and generally that is a one is your least expensive pigments your ones will be titanium whites maybe like yellow ochre burnt sienna they should be unless it's some weird source rare sienna that they had to like because it, it one of the things you might not know here's a fun fact i'll put it in a in a one minute video but i'll share it with you here because you showed up to the live um uh, certain pigments are sacred to uh, indigenous populations. Yeah. And um, ochre and sienna uh, can be very sacred, uh, especially in Australia. Like uh, wars and massacres occurred over ochre. Mm -hmm. Not even kidding. Like, like genocide over ochre. Um, and, and it's because these colors, uh, especially on, on indigenous populations, uh, can have great, uh, sacred and personal meaning because color is a huge deal. Um, and, and it's actually that, that story while heartbreaking is, is, is it's interesting to see how communities can revere color and use color to mm -hmm. prevent, um, uh, you know, marrying a relative that's too closely related to you to designate rank within a community to speak to spiritual transformation. Um, so, yes, in paint, it's a series one paint, but there are some ochres or siennas that are um, difficult to get, are rare to find. Like there's some ones in France that are hard. They're like now rare. There's less of them and they mm -hmm. have specific colors. So sometimes you'll see those get out of the one. If you see a three or four, that's a more expensive paint. I think, I think, uh, ochre is like a four or five in the series, uh, not ochre, uh, cad is higher in the series. I might even have a tube that I can look at and go, where in the series do I see it? A tube? A tube. They may have series. Yep. This is a series, uh, six. So it's right here under the paint number is series six. A lot of times this information will be on a tube. It will tell you a lot about it, including safety information. Like they get it on this tube. They're very crafty, these art makers. Let's try this. Okay. We're doing so super good. Good, good. And this, this is coming quite along. Yeah. I think this would, yeah, the, I like how the rock, this is the under rock. And now we're going to come in and get some of the over rock stuff. Um, no, it's the rocky part of the painting. So don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, share, click the thumbs up button and the buttons down below because we all like the buttons of the thumbs. So, you know, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, there, <laughs> the, click the comments, everyone's along. All right, hold on a second. Oh, I think I need to add, yeah, that series is for every professional paint company. Every professional paint company. Every paint professional. So they have level or tier, tier one, tier two, tier three. That is for the quality of the paint itself. So if you see tier one paint, that would be uh, Artist Loft or uh, the, the tier one Artist Loft. Now tier three Artist Loft is professional. So tier one, tier two, tier three is, um, or level one, level two, level three, is the, the quality of the paint. Right? Is it a, is it a student brand? Is it an economic pro brand? Is it a pro brand? Pro doesn't mean you have to be professional. It just means they're going to use really good stuff. 
Um, and it's super archival and you can know a lot more about your paint. It's for like, you know, you've really got into it and those things matter. Or maybe it's like hard to get colors or it has expanded colors. And uh, I'm just noticing there's a moment. Oh, no, it's okay. I got everything. You're okay. Just okay. having a, just have a little stress. It's just, you know, it's grown up kid stuff. Honey's having a hard moment. She's having. Can you, can you take me off camera? So yeah. I can at least on, give just, a hug. Just a heck. Can you guys give me a second for a yeah, family moment? We're going to take me off camera for a second, but I'm going to be right back. I'm going to have to. Yeah. I'm, gonna I'm go not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Whoosh. Okay. Yeah, so she goes, and I'm going to go over here and go, whoop. I'm going to mute her. So, no, no. We're just having like uh, all sorts of, you know, family growing up stuff is going on right now. And it's complicated things. And. We have a we have a live, but we still have a family. So you know, sometimes we just uh, we have to take a little stop for a break for that. And uh, you know, we'll all be okay. She's just you know we're just saying goodbye. And so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over here. Sorry about the little distraction, but ev everybody everybody's sending love. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put I'm gonna put something back on here. You know what it is though? It's a step. It's a step. We're at a step, and then We're I'm going to step. I'm going to step, and then I'm going to. I'm. I'm going to. I think I dried this. Yeah. Did I dry it? You I'm did. Gonna, I'm going to draw in our guy. Okay, you draw in the guy. Okay. And I'm going to get this prepped and stepped. Okay, and then you guys. I'm right here. Okay. I'm going to get a detail brush because for this next part, I'm going to use a detail. Now I'm going to do this in paint, which is not necessarily always what I recommend. And the reason that I'm going to oh, let me actually get my new favorite brush. A new favorite brush. <laughs> this is my new favorite brush. My number six Raphael Sepia. Um, I'm going to try to get this in my custom line because I really like this one. Or something similar to it. Maybe a little firmer, but I really like this. All right. We're going to get this black on here. And I'm going to come. And uh, you can do your chalk again. Sometimes I will do my chalk again to just give myself a guide to go, how big did you think this was? And then I'll be like, oh, yeah. So I want a nice bit of splash above the head. And so I've got to keep my guy within this sort of space here. I'll measure that for you. So you can really see that. That's going to be about three and a half inches in my canvas. It doesn't have to be exactly that on yours. That's just the measurement I'm going to use. And I'm going to start and I'm going to just paint in a head. Now, what's great about the human figure is the human figure is six to eight heads tall. <laughs> Weird thing, like if you take like a figure painting class, somebody will mention how many heads is a figure. Uh, it gets more important in fashion illustration because they do a longer, they do an eight body head to do fashion. Eight head body. That's a nice little... It's a nice little circle. It's a bit of an oval more than just a round circle. I like to come down a little bit. I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to give myself a sharp downward angle. And that's a shoulder. And I'm going to give myself another kind of downward angle. And now I'll come down to right about halfway through here. And I think I will kind of say, all right, there's a jacket here. Bend a little line forward. I'd have overbent the knee this time. Down. Kind of exaggerating this a bit. All right. So we've got a little bit of an activated stance there, right? Because he's uh, he's going through some stuff, man, and he's he's got to weather it. Now his hand will be right here, about mid thigh. And really what I like to think about is like elbows tend to be at the uh, waistline and hands tend to be around mid thigh. So I'm going to kind of bring that silhouette in. It's a weird and awkward silhouette when you first put it in. Another thing that I can do is if I want to give myself more legs, I can take my background color, this. 
and kind of come in and, and do a little bit of like, look at this. This is a weird thing sometimes we forget is that we have subtractive power in our acrylic art, which means we can take away. Now, um, somebody asked what was better, golden or Saint-Elier, like what's the best paint? Well, technically the best paint might be, le, I'm gonna say this wrong, La Croix. I think it's like Christian La Croix. It's, I think it's La Croix, <laughs> darling. Remember this from Absolutely Fabulous, La Croix, darling, it's La Croix. But that's basically how it's spelled. And it comes in, a, it does not look like much, but they make small batches. They run out of colors. It is, it, it is the best of the best of the best, sir. But you have to understand, it's like they use small production run, very, very rare Pigment, uh, pigments, yeah. And it's the milling is it's like a whole thing, and it's from France, and it's their whole little deal. When when the art is the piece of art with the <laughs> art of the paint and all of the stuff all the way down the rabbit hole, that's that's where you go. And it, and I have I haven't even worked with it. There's Chevron. There's some really good paints out there. Um, in professional paints, I consider Golden and Sennelier um, and Holbein kind of in the same family. And they each have different temperaments. And I like to use different ones for different preferences. Like uh, Golden it, um, has just these incredible pigment loads. And uh, man, their, their product line is incredible. And their customer service is incredible. And you know, they're so reliable and they're always coming up with their stuff. And they're so innovative and their company, they're employee owned. Um, whereas, you know, on uh, Sennelier, they're uh, hundreds of years in business. Um, they're family owned, same family. They have history and they just like, you can't talk about the history of painting and not talk about Sennelier in, in pastels, in oils, in anything. Um, and they have, they have done, I think, a lot to put oil pigments into the acrylic lines. Um, you look at Holbein. Holbein just has so many colors. They're a Japanese company. They have the best mm -hmm. neons and, and so much quality within the line. They have the most gesso. They have the best gesso. They have the best gold gesso. Best gold gesso. So you just got to kind of think of all these things as... Um, uh, different but equal and you like them for different reasons and it's really about you as a painter so he's really kind of a block with two sticks at first isn't he <laughs> just a block yeah, with a two bit. sticks and that's okay he can be a block with two sticks that's totally fine I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, kind of black into my white over here and I'm going to just very carefully kind of imply a little collar mm -hmm. Not a lot, just a little bit. Anybody see the Barbie movie yet? It was fantastic. I loved it. Do I have any questions that I need to answer? Let's see here. Whoop, by the I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my uh, white. What do you think about the apple barrel? I personally prefer, um, I find apple barrel is not resilient to water. It underbinds a lot it has separation problems i like that they're available in so many places i think that they do good um craft lot. painting i i personally prefer deco of the two companies between pla like i i like the deco because the americana line they 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 figured out a way to put in some real pigments into the paint mm -hmm. so that you could do color mixing better mm. they thought about the color mixing issues that were happening and kind of worked really hard to solve it. All right, I put a little black in there. And so um, just just preferentially, that's my thing. I'm going to tell you right now, though, I've seen good artists use Apple Barrel. I, I think that, yes, paint can be impactful. I'm just putting a little bit of that brown there. Maybe a little heavier brown on that part of the hand and a little bit. Just so we can see it, it's just a smidge. And let's come up here to the top of the head. And we're going to just start to think about a little bit of brown coming down uh, for the hair. It's just a little bit of a painting. Oh, no Barbie, excuse me out. 
I think the Barbie movie, um, I'm not trying to make you go, maybe you're an Oppenheimer. Maybe you're doing Barbenheimer. I don't know. Um, I think that they addressed, uh, you know, even people who weren't into Barbies, I think that they uh, really captured. John and I talked about this a lot, like, because he really liked the Transformers movie. And I actually really liked the Barbie movie. And we realized it was because these were the toys we related to on some level. Now, look, I won't lose my mind until they make a Briar Horse movie. <laughs> so. That's when it's all going to get really just crazy for me. I'm just putting a little bit of shaded hair here. You know, it's kind of coming down. You can even blow it in the wind if you want. It's just kind of an underpainting at first. It's it does you don't want it to be too serious and you definitely you know, want to kind of imply things. And remember, you can if you if you're like, "Oh man, I overthickened something or I did anything." You can do subtractive painting. When you have that in, you're going to take a little bit of your white and black. We're going to make it gray. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to come here and on this sleeve, you're going to put in a seam right there. Kind of curve that right in for the shoulder. You're going to come along there and sh like we're going to highlight the back a little bit. We're going to highlight that a little. A little bit right there. A little triangle. This little triangle is going to come back a bit. Some downward highlight lines. These are very, you're not, you really like less is more. I can't tell you, can't explain that enough. How less is sometimes more. A little bit there. And a little bit there. When I have that in, I'm going to come into my white again. I rinsed out. I'm coming into my white. A little bit of a hint of a, of white there and maybe a little bit of a hint of extra white here, right? Because we want to have that be a little bit brighter. So we have a lot happening in the house right now. Uh, we ha we're having a, um, some stuff is coming in and being delivered. And so John has to run out periodically. I'm going to kind of, I think, shave that in a bit. So I like that line some. And if you weren't aware that you can carve in your figures like this, it's super great that you are now because it does make a huge difference. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my just pure burnt sienna. Kind of put that in there. Just highlight a bit on that. And let's come back with some black. Let's come back with some black. Mm -hmm. We're just painting a little figure, John. Is everything up, okay upstairs? Oh, excellent. Just putting in, kind of making sure that the black is nice and deep. Isn't that fun? Look at him go. All right. Guardians of the Galaxy. I enjoyed them also. I did not have Moon Dreamer, Stephanie. I did not get those when I was growing up. That might be age related. Uh, I did like Guardians of the Galaxy very much. But no, I did like the Barbie movie. I won't do spoilers. I'll just say I liked it. Um, now, I don't want all of uh, the Ryan Gosling fans to murder me. And I'm not about to say something mean about Ryan Gosling. So you don't have to. But generally, I, I haven't had this swoon effect with Ryan that I, I recognize that some people have where they're very swoony, but I, I have found him as an actor to be really skilled and good at his craft, uh, as is Margot Robbie. And the two of them together in this movie were a delight the entire way. I felt that there were different little moments where Ryan almost broke the fourth wall with the audience, uh, not in the intended way you might in the movie, but in this way where 
he's almost inviting us to have fun with what he's having fun with. And I really enjoyed it. John thought we were going to go see the Blues Brothers and had actually dressed up as one of the Blues Brothers. It was a, it was a date. And it was supposed to be a surprise for me. So I'm sitting there and we're going and he's like in a black suit with glasses and a fedora and a briefcase. And I'm like, what movie are we going to go see that you're in a suit? I had to like change clothes. I'm like, well, if you're wearing a suit, I can't dress casually. So I got undressed. We got dressed up and we go to this theater and they only show one movie. And I guess the movie, uh, they had to bump the movie. So they changed it from the Blues Brothers to Barbie. So I got to, and I was sitting there talking to him about Barbenheimer, which is the Oppenheimer Barbie movie marathon that everybody was talking about. And then, um, <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. He, uh, I'm sitting there and I'm like, are we here to see the Blues Brothers? And he's like, yeah. And then they changed it. So then we see Barbie. So he got surprised with Barbie. So I feel like uh, some some of the guys will be like, oh, I I know how that would feel because like I didn't want to see the Barbie movie. John didn't want to see it either. Well, I, I what, what it was. All right, I we're going to take like... just a little bit of yellow into our brown, and you then you say your thing. I didn't mean to interrupt oh, no, no, you, babe. No, no. I'm so sorry. I just it wasn't on my short list of videos to see. I was I was totally fine to see it. Like you had had a whole blues planned date. I did. I I'm had, highlighting well, that hair a little bit because I think that that will help it like kind of look nice. All right, we're good there. We were we had a we had the diner and then the, the, the there's a there's a blues club. And let's uh, let's back out. I need to I want to see it from a distance since I can't stand up. What do you think? I'm gonna add a little gray here, and I'm gonna just keep sort of making sure that my suit reads as black, but also has shape. And that's really about catching even subtle highlights. Even see what I'm doing subtle highlights. subtle highlights. Even though it's got a little white. I think we're ready for a step and we can move on. I think so. You think so? Yeah. Are you guys doing okay? I'm trying not to speed along because I know some of you guys might be submitting. All right. Back into our big brush. We're going to put a little more detail into our water, shall we? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my phthalo green and my uh, phthalo blue. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to come here into this part of the wave, making kind of little curl, little dark areas, right? See how we're adding a little dark? We're coming off him through this midway point in the canvas, making little dark marks. In your waves, your depth, the deepest colors will be where the water is thickest and the least light can get through it. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what we're determining. Now I can come into this, I can get a little yellow here and a little white. And I'm going to make kind of a blue green that I'm brushing here. And we're going to go ahead and go horizontal. Now we're going to change the brush to horizontal back and forth motion. Kind of wiggling it back and forth and then I might even come. I think I'll go back into my blue, green and burnt sienna. I'm going to add a little more burnt sienna. Oh, that's good. Let's get some white on here. It's a very stormy day, guys. Yeah. Super stormy. And that's what that's what we're trying to capture. I am getting this color in here because when I come in with my white, a lot of that color, I'm going to put some up here because a lot of my color will disappear. Blending it into the dark. Kind of back and forth, maybe a little hint here. And then I'm going to go ahead and get a little white and it's okay if it picks up the, the gray. So I'm going to work it into this. See how we're doing? And we're talking about the choppiness of it. Yeah. That's what we've got going on. Working the choppiness. Are there any questions I've missed, babe? Can we use Posca pens for fine tuning details or is that cheating? That's not cheating. It's a tool. It's a paint pen. They made it for you to do fine details. I love Posca. <laughs> You've not cheated. You've just been creative. 
as an artist should. I'm taking little short marks here into the water to kind of talk about maybe some of the energy and maybe be a little more painterly. Yeah. And I can come above this dark as we are. Maybe a little more white. I do want it because I'm going to come back with a knife, a palette knife. I don't want to have my brightest white yet. That's why I'm adding tones and tints to it. All right, and come back and mix into that gray. And you can see we're just thinking about our waves, aren't we? Splashing. Yeah. I may have to actually switch over to my angle brush through here because yeah. he's so uh, he's such a multi -co complex little figure that I may need the edges of my angle. This is a half inch angle by Catalyst on Princeton. I'm bringing my white to my gray just to make sure that as we go around him a little to lighten him up. Just using the corner and come up here and get a little bit of this. And it's a little blue gray, isn't it? Yeah. Might even switch to this brush for a while. So. Let's make rough crisscrossing wild brush strokes. See how these are wild? I do. These are wild. And this will help us when the knife comes in. Yeah, it's just a palette knife, so nobody's going to get hurt. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Let's see here. Oh, I think your hair looks amazing today. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of people talking about how they relate to the painting, which is really nice. Uh, Corey says he looks amazing. And then Donna uh, Lindsay says, why can't the man be added last? He could be, but there's a lot of splashing around him. I want to layer him into to put him in the center of the painting. Um, and so getting him in now allows me to change where he fits in the way we as observers see him being mm -hmm. so this then becomes foreground middle ground background and so that's kind of a nice layering thing because we got to go over him now you could come back and go over him i just like this way one of the things that i'm going to tell you right now very important thing um and i don't care what any other teacher says <laughs> about this i really think this is true and i have a lot of experience is that there are almost always tons of ways to accomplish a goal in art mm -hmm. almost always a ton of ways to do it sure people have techniques right and they may have preferential techniques and they'll be like this is the way you have to do it i'm going to do light wispy brush strokes as i come through here see these yeah little light wispy brush strokes um one of the things like uh Here's a good example. Anybody ever hear of a makeup company called Anastasia Beverly Hills? No. No, you would not. As if anyone has heard of uh, Anastasia. It, not me. Uh, in the mid-2000s, this woman's brow saved us from the Pamela Andrews. I love Pamela, but the brows were a little thin. Brought the brows back. Mm. And she, for whatever reason that I've never been able to understand, pretended to invent golden ratio. <laughs> Huh. And I don't know. That's maybe harsh. Uh, this is this is something that uh, I'm adding a little more blue to this as I come through here. Yeah. And I'll maybe come down and get a little more grain to it. So what she did is she basically used golden proportions to lay out the arc of your eyebrow, right? And then um, and understand this is from like 
I think I've seen makeup tips from the 40s with this exact nostril to the front of the eyebrow, center of the iris to the to the arc, and then the nostril to the edge of your eyes. Like you, you know how you're supposed to like line up your pencil like this to figure that out. She patented this. I don't know how she got this patent through. Yeah. Right. And and then she's like, this is my way. This is the best way. This is the only way. Well, it's the way we've been doing it forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> but there are other ways to do, uh, you know, an eyebrow, e- even there, right? Like the golden ratio is great, but there are other choices. And that's the thing that you've got to keep kind of in mind. I'm going to do very light wispies here. So we have lots and lots of contrast. Let's call this a step and then we'll continue on in our water because I don't want to get so far ahead of everybody that they're overwhelmed. You know. Uh, so yeah, we're showcasing art. If you finish your painting or you've got one from our recent live shows that you'd like to share, uh, you can take your photograph of your painting and you want to submit it to support at theartsherpa.com. Uh, please include your name. Uh, and the mods are going to try to get that to John before the end of the show. And we're going to mm-hmm. show some, it, we will, tr- I can't guarantee we'll get everybody, but we're going to try our darndest. Nobody is being rejected though. Understand that it's always about timing and you may end up just being on another show. And we're going to try to like, make sure you have a link to when your stuff was featured. Are we on a new step? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So I'm going to keep working on this and I'm going to come through, I'll come down here into more of my gray blue that I have down here, a little more blue maybe with white and we're going to start to really paint in our ocean. These will be horizontal brush strokes. I can always come up and get into my uh, phthalo blue, phthalo green, burnt sienna up here. That's always gettable again, right? And we're going to sort of blend this up in there and make some nice little motion in the water. can kind of come back and forth. And then if I want to come down into my blue gray, I just layer that right in, don't I? Let some just peek out. It's a storm. It should be messy. So we're just going to keep taking little, little short strokes, curving them this way, kind of painting up our water, aren't we? Now, the reason I do this brush before the knife is if you're not really doing knives a lot, doing an entire painting in knives can be overwhelming. But if you do a lot of it brush and then finish it with knife, it's a good entryway to getting there. I've moved to the corner of this brush and I'm going to do some little light lines that are with the toe corner of that brush. Bring another little highlight in there. I rinsed out. I'm going to come down to my gray, kind of mix it in, get a little more white. Are we missing any questions on submitting? Uh, just answering some of those questions. Yeah. Yeah. John's going to answer those questions. And it, this is for fun. You don't have to. It's just, I think it's wonderful to see what you guys do during the painting. And we realized we could do it thanks to Jenna Bug the other day. And we were like, let's do this more. Sometimes I'll go up and get a little more blue gray to sort of blend in. But yeah, teachers will sometimes, you know, say all things must be this or you can't use black and landscapes or I invented the propor- golden proportion eyebrow. It's just... But there's always a lot of ways to do it. Te- you know, that's that's the thing to know as a student. That's as my job as a teacher. It's to think of how many ways can I show you to paint this and how many ways can I help you through this project? I'm doing little short marks around this side of his head. 
I'm using a little bit of my mixture of my thalo green, thalo blue, burnt sienna, and white from up here down into my black down here. Mm. And you as students just need to realize that teachers are people and sometimes they form strong opinions. And those opinions are only of value if they help you get the job done. Isn't that scandalous? Yeah. That's Could true. Be. Huh? Could be scandalous. It's scandalous. All right, I'm putting a little blue up in the wave because I just like this color so much and I really want to layer this out. I think I'm also going to brush in a little brown. I'm going to take a little of my yellow. Let's go a little yellow and a little burnt sienna and then maybe even a little black. And let's do some downward brush strokes. Again, half inch angle brush, Catalyst by Princeton. This is a good brush, by the way. Can we do way. a new step here? Yeah, you can call it a step. This is a good place? That's okay. Yeah. That's totally fine. What was I, what, what, so this is a good question. Uh, a very long number, I'm not going to read out the number name. <laughs> many, many numbers, ass. What do you think the man was thinking standing there? Um, I think I was thinking that he felt overwhelmed and that he was on this little bit of dry land, but it felt like the ocean was swallowing up and ready to take him whole. Because um, I think sometimes, and, and again, I'm using my own experience. Sometimes mental health issues feel like that to me. Mm -hmm. A little bit like I'm going to be swallowed whole. I'm adding a little more burnt sienna and black to this. I'm going to put some darker brown down here. Um, that, and so I, I did use some of my own personal experience to sort of project into that. I did try to watch a bunch of reasonable talks about men's mental health. Um, and I tried to watch a lot of perspectives, even ones that I don't particularly agree with. I do try to, on occasion, aggravate myself by getting out of my own bubble. I highly recommend it. And watching perspectives that you deeply disagree with. <laughs> See, to me, there's an inner inner conversation happening where he's looking. He just looked at his at his phone and then looked up and said, the GPS surely doesn't mean go there. <laughs> I'm adding a little more black as I go. And just kind of, I'm just trying to give some dimensionality to this. I'm going to bring a little bit of more black down through here. I'm not really rinsing out my brush, so color is carrying with it. Just pulling a little more black down. I'm going to be doing some with my palette knife, but getting that brush work out early really helps me. Yeah, so I tried to use my own perspective, but I did try to listen to some different uh, uh, experts on men's mental health issues um, uh, when I was designing this. It's just been something I've been more and more aware of. I'm just seeing more and more creators that I follow uh, coming forward saying, hey, you know, I'm having a hard time and this is what this looks like. And then more and more people are, I'm brushing across. See how that does an interesting blend? And I kind of bring it across like that and down, working it wet into wet. Um, just there's a lot going on. And so I was like, you know, hey, what's that about? And sometimes when something is emotionally impactful for me, I, uh, I have to paint about it <coughs> to work it out. All right, let's call that a step. Just a little bit of painting Don't here and there. Just a little bit there, yeah. Yeah. That's all right. That was a short step. He, uh, he shouldn't see the Barbie movie, Lots of Man Bashing. That's an interesting take. I actually, if I can, Christy, because uh, John and I talked about that we did. a bit. We did. And actually, I felt that what they did was bring forward that sometimes when we provide play for children, we we gave Barbie because right kids kids play their life, right? They play what's reflected in their life. And one of the I don't know about you growing up playing with Barbie. One of the things that always bothered me. Uh, Ken was fine, but there were not. Ken dolls that represented the roles that I saw in my life that men took. And I remember always wishing that there were roles that look like my world looked. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, in that pretend play. And the problem with Ken is that he is in 
in in Barbie in some ways treated like an accessory and he doesn't have dimensions. And some of that is maybe how young girls relate to those dynamics. But I think it would have been interesting to give Ken more. And I think that um I I I think that what they were actually trying to do was just talk about how we relate to these archetypes and how sometimes the archetypes don't really fit all of our needs as a, as a people. Yeah. So it was it it was interesting because it was there and then I was like is that indicative of this or is it about how we're relating to this toy? And 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 you know John and I were talking about you know how you compare this to Transformers or how how GI Joe we actually had a big deep conversation afterwards about uh, uh, the the female roles that were in GI Joe versus the female roles that exist in Barbie and we were talking about like he it like got deep like it got it deep did. so I was like a movie when it takes me someplace deep where I have to really think about how I view the world and maybe have to unpack some of my standard stuff um, I and maybe they were trying to i guess that was my personal takeaway because i had already had a loaded feeling about ken not and i and i kind of felt that they brought it up in the movie and i don't want to spoil it in a couple of different ways and i would love to hear anybody's take on that and it's okay to have a different opinion it's all right we'll all survive it and it'll be fine and we can thumbs it up and be be nice because we're gonna be nice in the comments and everywhere and all the time right yep okay all right what's so we stepped (laughs) i think so now we are on to. Oh, um, Ali Scrap says, I felt he finally accomplished something great and he feels like he can take on the world. That's just me. I love that. I love that you looked at this and got something different than my own reason for painting it. Art is totally supposed to do that. Yeah. So I'm going to take that as a compliment and say, I think that your opinion of what he's experiencing is super valid as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got a new step? Yep, we did the steps. Brooke is like, yeah, that movie was much deeper than I thought it was going to be. All right, so, man, I'm telling you what, not since Catherine Hepburn has there been a woman in Hollywood, like, like, that has just come and said, you know what, I understand I look a certain way and I appeal to the male gaze. I'm talking about Margot Robbie. But uh, also I'm kind of a boss and she's a massive production company and like overnight she became like super powerful and like is is just making her own money and is like taking over and changing things i'm super excited to see what this production company does and i hope it brings us lots of fun innovative and unexpected projects i am getting my brush with my burnt sienna and my cad yellow and a little mars black um and then i'm going to come into my white and I'll go ahead. It doesn't matter. It's okay if it picks up a other little color with around it, but I want these to be just slightly warm tones up front. Even though we're going to have lots and lots of dark down there, I want to have a little bit of warmth. Smidge uh, some maybe green in there. See how I'm just kind of trying to make a, just a little bit warmer? Oh, there we go. Perfect. There's just a little bit of warmth in that color. And I'm using these very short, very rough brush strokes, right? We're layering those in. So yeah, I thought it was a super interesting movie. I haven't seen Oppenheimer yet. I probably will go. Um, or see it. I did see, um, we're just continuing this warmth through here and we're going to come up here. Now as I'm going forward, I'm going to just make shorter little See how I've angled the toe down and, and the little short end up and I'm making short little marks kind of coming up this way. There's different ways that I kind of try to set up the energy of the brush when I'm trying to be energetic with the brush, which is what we're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and get a little black and blue in my, in my, in my uh, brush. I haven't rinsed it out. And just down here at the corner, I'm going to kind of blend that in, this dark, stormy energy coming up into that warm brown come and pick up some more white into that it'll be a little more gray but we're blending those things in and again we're gonna we're gonna have the palette knife here and it's gonna even kind of chop it up even more so that's sort of nice but that's like this weird last finishing thing that we're gonna do so this is sort of rushing up the rock coming up this way and let's put it underneath the water where we're going to have a shadow through here 
Another thing that we can do is we can start to speak to, let's get some gray on our brush on the toe. And let's make some rough. See how I'm, okay, so I'm on this toe. That's what I mean by the toe of the brush, that pointy bit. And I'm going to make some little scribbles and bits coming down the rock to talk about water. And again, we're going to have the palette knife, but it's just nice sometimes to kind of get in a little bit of that roughness. If I ever get too much, I just come back with a little bit of black. See how we're doing? So I can erase anything I'm not loving with a little bit of black. Uh, Ali Scrabs says, like, he reminds me of my dad because their dad was super positive influence on their, on their life and, uh, my art and to take on challenges. So I feel that the role of, that the roles that we play in, there's no right or wrong way to have a family in any means. But the people that come into our lives, family, friends, teachers, family members, these different roles, these different people who come in and show us different ways of living our thinking. And I, and I, I think that the, I see great value in uh, what dads bring to the table. I do. It's, it's important stuff. It was for me growing up, and I'm not saying in any way that you can't have a tremendous childhood uh, with a single parent or any of that. I'm just saying if you're blessed enough to have a full life with a diverse community of people and family members who can bring different ways of looking at the world to you, you end up a much more whole individual as an adult. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I love how we have to like caveat everything on the internet these days, right? Just, just to be sure, just be like, look, 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 I'm not making some crazy other statement. I'm just saying this small thing, which you can take or leave as you please. So we're just doing this rough down there. I can come back into my white. I've got my gray and white. Still off white, right? Just a little bit brighter than what's behind. There's some kind of pigment in my brush. So this white is not super bright, is it? And we're going to bring this up here, kind of bringing this splash and energy up here. And let's come and load a little, uh, little extra white on our brush, maybe to come up into the wave up here. I haven't rinsed out, so some of these things, and I always find it's like kind of nice to, trust me on this one, take the toe of your angle brush or just the edge of your brush and make little, see how my brush is wiggling? These are like almost like writing lines. They're, they're almost like calligraphy in the way that they read. This is a type of mark that we make in painting, and I think it's a very powerful one. So yeah, it was an interesting movie. I totally validate what Christy was saying. Like I saw, I just, I was wondering if they weren't speaking more to that, like how we, how we relate to toys and play. I was scrolling up. Kathy asked a question that I think I missed. Hmm. She, uh, I was scrolling up to find out where it is. Kathy, you may have to re-ask. I may have missed that. You may have to put it on all comments too to scroll up and find things because if it's on top, it will hide them from you. Oh, sorry. Let me see if I can find that for you. All right. Let's come through here and I'm going to just very carefully kind of. Bring some extra little white there. I'm gonna come on my toe again here. Let's dance that around, okay? Yeah. Bring some up here. I like to just pull things through because it unifies so that when I come in later with the knife, everything is sort of tied in and feels complete. Oh, 
Oh, goodness, Brooke, this is getting deep. I need a silly Sherpa painting so I don't cry at work. I have drippy lips coming up soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have drippy lips. I have a new magic book. I'm going back and repainting some of my older designs because I want to give them a fresh, modern look. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I would do them differently now. So, like, keep watching. Lots of light Sherpa coming. Maybe... Maybe not the tank one in the day in the sunflowers, but like the rest of them coming up. All right, let's do a step and we'll we're going to get our artist knife out. Oh, let me get you a step up here a second. Hold on now, a second. if you don't have an artist knife, you can still complete the painting. Just do this with your brush and just keep layering up the colors as I'm layering up with my knife. So if you've got a brush at home, you would just keep doing these techniques, pulling up lighter and lighter and lighter colors, right? Try to allow it to be dry brushing. Try to skip, you know, like let it skip over the canvas and let it be rough but I really like a diamond knife. So this is a diamond artist knife. It has what's called a crank in it, and that allows you to easily tuck your finger here. It has generally four angles and a rounded little nub toe. We do have these uh, on our website um, for sale, um, and you can generally get them some places now. So, but diamond knives, you can get plastic diamond knives sometimes for like a buck. So it's just, and you can also sometimes cut up a loyalty card. So it's really, really about what you're ready for. Uh, Virgo's like, Cinnamon, where are your paintings for sale at? Um, they are for sale here sometimes. And I've got, uh, we need, to, we're going to do a, a big art sale coming up soon um, in, in, in the next 10 days. Uh, I'd be, I'm getting, we're still working out the logistics of what paintings we're going to put up for sale. And uh, if we're going to do a live painting marathon where the paintings that I'm doing live are for sale. So that is coming up. Let's, but let's get our knife. You can see that here. Let's talk about this. Now, if you've never used a knife before, I do have a video um, on how to use artist knives. What you saw me do is I pulled out some white paint and now I'm scraping into my color on my uh, palette. And so I'm just using what's here. You use what you have. Um, what would be in here if you don't, if you can't do that, it's a little bit of the altering blue, a little bit of Mars black and burnt sienna is sort of what's here. Sometimes some green got into it, but it's just a little bits of color. We want an off white. <laughs> And we're going to just come over the surface of the wave, touching the bottom. See how my handle's moving around and I'm just letting the knife touch from the bottom on the surface? Yeah. So it's a little different than what we normally do. You can even kind of wiggle it around. Look at me wiggling it around. And that creates a very rough and fun texture. I like it a lot, don't you? Mm-hmm. You can see that the the palette knife and the brush marks actually marry very well to to each other. I think that they work well together. All right, knife parallel to the surface and just kind of wiggling it around. I can push it around with my toe. That's the tip of the knife. It's the toe. See, I just picked up color from what's around me. Mm -hmm. I'm just keeping it from being, I want to reserve a bright white is what I'm doing. Kind of spread it around. It can be really anxious making using knives for the first time because it will feel in your mind that what you're doing is wrong and not like what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably you're doing very similar to what I'm doing and what you're doing is fine. But in your mind, it will feel wrong. So you see how we scrape the knife? I want you to look at the load before I start to work it down on the canvas. It's generally on the edge in what's called a rolled bead. I can use the toe. That's that little rounded point. And I just kind of move and touch my knife around to give the energy of splashing extreme water. How's everybody doing? I know this is a deep this painting. This is really cool. I don't do deep paintings a lot, but on occasion, no. man, stuff gets... I, I'm telling you what, like, I've been thrown lately. Corey was asking, could you use a cardstock uh, 
Uh, you could use like a plastic card, you know. So you can use plastic cards, but they work better for uh, knife edge work where you're trying to make lines. It can be a little harder to get the sort of pushed around rough feeling. Sometimes, like if I don't have a knife, I just go to my brush and I just try to paint really like rough and, and loose. Um, sometimes you can get a little bit like, you really almost have to just be really good at your little bank mm. card. Yeah. This is the problem. It's, it's a whole other skill in and of itself. It is. And is it doable? Yeah. Is it the easiest? No. Because if it was the easiest, I would have it on the show right now. Yep. That's why, like, I'm not like, oh, buy a palette knife because you need to buy more art stuff. I'm like, a palette knife is honestly just the easiest one to use right now. Oh, I got a little low with my way, but that's okay. I'll just come through here and blend it through. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Let's call it a step really so that you can see that go in and we don't get too far ahead of you. Look at how that goes. Isn't that energetic? Doesn't that look? I love it. I love the look of paint on canvas. It just makes me super happy. Now I've got this weird color over here that I'm going to pull in because I had some warmer colors. If you remember up front, I grabbed just such a small amount of it that it's what we would call a tint. We're tinting the white, aren't we? I'm just pulling in here. And when I want to move it around, we're skipping around. It's about flipping it over. I'm not pressing deep into the canvas. If you'll notice, the canvas is not bending in. When you're painting along at home, always look to see. One of the reasons that I paint on canvas, and we're going to do some painting on paper, but the reason I started painting on canvas is so that you had a visual cue for pressure, right? If the, you see the canvas moving, I'm pressing very, very hard. If you don't see the canvas deeply moving, I'm not pressing very hard. Gives you just a visual cue. Now, when I come around him, I'm going to be extra careful. And the reason that I'm going to be extra careful. Is because, you know, for the same reason that a big brush was super challenging. Is it's really easy to sort of mess it up. I'm going to come up over his leg. And I'm rubbing. See how I'm rubbing the toe of the canvas? And just touching a little bit and allowing it to offload onto the rock. Yeah, I take away a little of my leg, but I am allowing us to see the wave splashing up on that surface now. The wave is splashing up and over on the surface. I can then even, if I load, just see how I'm loading just on the toe of this. It's mostly the bead is right there at the tip. That's the way to get this going. And I can then kind of scribbling back and forth, put some little sea foam down the rock. Right now, if I want some darker sea like water, I just add a little more gray. And you can see that's pretty easy to blend in with just the gray. You can even get a little blue gray. Mixing on the surface into that sort of water to say, okay, there's some dark right there. Look, that's not too problematic. Getting some more loaded on the toe, the edge there. Put some more water than I expected, but that's okay. Sometimes when you're adding water, you'll add a lot more than you expect to add, and that's totally fine. You don't have to All right, let's, we're going to do one last step after this for sure. And so let's put up another one. And then um, if you're thinking of submitting, we'll how do, fitting. huh? I huh? said how fitting it ends on the 13th step. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I try not to do that. I'm going to get some just white, white. Okay, I'm loading up some just white. And I'm going to very thickly put some highlights on my seafoam. Thickly. That just means, see how thick that is on my yeah. palette knife? And I'm just touching and releasing. This is sort of the highlight of the water. Turn your handle, turn your hand, turn your arm to get multi directions. It will hide knife patterns. 
so you don't get like big knife patterns. And again, I have a whole video on how to use artist knives mm -hmm. for beginners, right and left-handed. Touching, touching, touching. So the more of the knife kind of caught that. So I want to break that up a little bit and make that more of a splash. And that's how I fix that. See how I did that? I do. It gave me a weird moment. And I was like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in your weird moment. How do I keep it looking like snow? So what water and snow are similar in how they paint. Um, but usually context is how our brain does the difference because like one um the way that water moves the brush direction and the splashing will indicate that it's snow um another i mean not snow uh, water the way that we have horizontal brush strokes and then we have like these you know kind of splashy ones context helps more than you know and then brush directionality, uh, hue. I wouldn't use these hues generally in snow. We generally would see those in water. Um, so it's really kind of about that. And then thinking about the way water breaks apart and its splash particulates are super important. Now I'm going to come across here, kind of going back and forth. Just making sure that there's a little bit of. There we did. I yeah. generally got to go around the corner on this just to keep it from being aligned, but that's some nice little waves that are there. Mm -hmm. A little bit of pure white that we're going to come here. So that's just, that's a practice thing. Also, snow tends to be, a, I can make snow very colorful, but often it's just much more monochromatic and flat and smooth. You know, you like, I might do a technique similar to this if I had a skier ripping through a snowbank, uh -huh. blowing up snow, but I probably also would splatter, I would do a bunch of other things to solve that problem. Do you guys want to do a bunch of snow this winter? So much snow. We got winter wonder coming up. It could be like wind, like snow land. It could just be snow, 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 snow. I, I haven't done it because I'm so worried with uh with the way climate disruption has happened. I'm like, you know, if I paint too much snow and then it's a blizzard, people might be like, I don't I don't bless you for that. <laughs> um Kathy says I retyped my question. Can you see it? Let's see, I have to keep looking. Go, go back up and see if I can see Kathy's question because I'm on everybody. And maybe the mods grabbed it. Kathy. Oh, I'm looking. I don't see it. Yeah. Did my question get lost? Scroll up, please. And then Your I Your hair looks did. amazing. Thank you. Thank I you. I saw that. Yeah. I, I don't know don't what happened. I don't see Kathy's question I, you know at what? all. And I'm on all messages. Yeah, I don't see it either, either. It is possible, Kathy, that you're using an innocent word. A word that doesn't mean crazy things that this week on YouTube does. They just were like, nope, because, you can't use that word. Because kids are crazy and they and they make problems. and <laughs> no, no, no. But sometimes weird words like for a while, ink was a banned word. Which was because of yeah. tattoo, because tattoo artists were somehow associated by advertisers and drug culture, which I found a little. I'm not even a tattoo artist. Or have tattoos, but I found that a little offensive. That was a thing that happened a few years back. And so for Inktober, you had to like come up with other ways to say the word ink. Mm. Not our favorite, was it? No, sirree, Bob, it was not. <laughs> so I'm going to come here and just sort of put some nice little pure white splashes. Kind of pushing that, tapping that up and down as we did. I think we're pretty good, guys. I'm pretty happy, actually. I like it when the when I sort of dry brush a little splatter. I kind of like that where it's like scratched up there. Like a little bit of water. Went, Isn't that fun? Uh, yeah. Kind of toe load some. I'm happy with it. I am pretty happy with it. All right. Mm. 
Nah, I don't know that ad added anything. I will just black that away. <laughs> it's like, nah, you didn't make it better. Sometimes you'll be like, do this, and then you're like, you did not make it better. And then sometimes it does. Okay. I think we're pretty good. Oh, uh, yeah. All I'll right. take my stuff. And so then, you here. know, yeah, I, let me answer any questions that I missed while you guys are getting any paintings together. So I, I was actually over here looking at the submissions. We had, we had, a, I think that there was, there was some a little bit of confusion. I think Billy had sent over a really beautiful. Well, let's show uh, it. It was a church, but it, 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 it. it wasn't, it wasn't from this. It was something else that they had did. And they were just looking for uh, some follow up, uh, some advice and stuff. Oh, I can do that. If you can answer me the question, I can answer or something. Is that okay? I don't mind. Uh, I, I don't, don't care. I think so. Yeah. I'm happy to. There's, some of the paintings didn't come through. All I ask is that you don't bring another teacher's tutorial here to share. Not even my mom's. Yeah. Uh, unless you just are willing for me to say great. Because here's why. Um, one, you know, I, I, I know as a teacher, I, I wouldn't necessarily enjoy critique. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> strange do you know what i'm saying like my mom and i we don't critique each other's students work on our own lessons we just don't do it because it just could create weird moments yeah. and it just be weird just first weird so we love that there are many many teachers out there and we love that there's so many great paintings out there that you can do and they're all wonderful and every teacher likes to see their artwork uh and be able to talk with it but especially where there's a potential for critique i can't do it yeah. If unless it's mine, if it's mine, if it's my lesson, because I know what my intention was, I know what my goals for my students were, I know what the references were, I know what techniques we were doing, and I have a kind of good idea from watching you guys in group all the time, what y'all are working on just with as a community, like what skills are you? Because you guys believe it or not, have wishes for your community skills and stuff like that. So um, I don't, I don't, I'm totally happy to look at an original piece, but just be sure you're not like. Even my, I love my mom. I think my mom's great. I love my mom's stuff. And I let people share her artwork in group, but I don't critique it. And she doesn't critique. We don't do that. Right. Because we, we love each other. We don't want to have a weird family moment. And if you've been here a minute, you know, even varnish can kick it off. So that's where we're at with I'm, it. I, so the image they sent over, I'm converting. You have to give me just a minute. Oh, okay. It, well, it, just, I can, yeah. are there any questions I can answer? Oh, uh, let me go back over and see about that. Multitasking. Let's I can see do it here. on my. Oh, I can do it on my phone. That I have probably, Skype. Probably, yeah. Why don't we do I some? could do that. I could. I'm gonna turn this off, and I can get. I'm not gonna let you guys see me. You're gonna see the back of my phone, and I will. So real come quick, over to tell Skype. Every, tell everybody. Uh, so I, you know, that's we can all read your phone there. So let's not do that. Yeah, we can all read the phone. So move it aside to your left. There you go. <laughs> and um, other thing, uh, how do they submit their painting for this? What is? How do they go about doing that? So if you would like to submit your painting to be shown on one of the live shows, you would take a picture of it and email support at theartsherpa.com and put the tagline in submission for live show. Uh, the moderators are over there and they will grab it and send it to John. Please include your name so I can shout you out. And then John will get it off of Skype and put it up at the end of one of our live shows. Um, like in the screen and then we all get to ooh and ah it and yeah. i we are going to be nice and i we're going to be so sweet and you don't have to worry about that because being a beginner is a precious precious time and um just just so you understand if you would like feedback i will give feedback i generally don't do critique because sometimes uh when people are new they don't have the confidence and and internal uh self-worth to know like um you know how to even take a critique so a good critique i'll tell you something right now and i should do a whole video on how to give a critique but a critique a, a true critique is twofold the first part is the person asking the question when you when you're an artist and you're asking for a critique you want to have a clear question that people can respond to general questions like is it good is it really helpful for you it's better for you to go i was trying to do better highlights or i was trying to get better snow or this was my goal for my painting to help people know what you're specifically asking for because sometimes even meaning well we can answer the wrong question and make you feel weird about a painting when you were making an artistic decision that you had specifically chosen and didn't need that second guess you needed to think about like how are how's my line work how can i make my line work better so you want to have something that's a specific question and then the person answering the question your answer cannot be um, 
uh, uh, you shouldn't assign value or uh, what's how would I what would be a good way of saying like whether it's good or bad? You want to you're not saying whether it's something not, is good yeah, or bad. It's not qualitative. It's not that's it's not qualitative. Okay, it is sp specifically about the goal. So when I respond to somebody's artwork and they ask me, like I feel like everything feels a little unanchored and I don't know how to make it feel more real, then I can come in and say underneath solid objects in this line of light deepen the shadows and gradiate those out and make sure you use localized color so that they read as natural and organic. I know that sounds like a bunch of weird arty terms, yeah. but when you're far enough along enough for critique to be a really fantastic use, that's exactly what you needed to hear. Like, oh, I forgot to deepen my shadows or I forgot to use localized color or something. And it's a great way for artists to help each other sort of break plateaus or get out of their own bubble or maybe find another way through. Yeah. Um, it could be something like, how should I frame this for exhibition? Or, um, you know, I just feel like my greens were too green, you know, and then somebody could come in and be like, well, you could like take burnt sienna and some glaze and knock all that back in the background. And then that'll pull these forward and keep that. It's actionable. All critique needs to be actionable. It needs to be something the student can do to actually make a change in the painting. Well, hey, that, we good have, critique can change everything for you. Bad critique can sour you on art, which is why I've forbidden it in my group. All right. So, I mean, people can ask for a little bit, but we're not, we don't really art cop. <laughs> I just say, hey, it's just like, well, be we, nice. So we've had, we, we have a bunch of people who submitted stuff. But for some reason, there's a little bit of a technical problem here on the website where some, we, we didn't get all of the images that were submitted. So if you've submitted one, please go back to the website and reattach your image. Um, you can't figure out how to fix the image I painted. Ah, uh, so yeah, we'll we'll set up a different thing for uh, critiquing other things. But here, real quick, I want to show. If, we, if it's all we have, no, no, I can no, do I've it got, right now. I've got Billy. Uh, Billy hi, Billy. Oh, <gasps> Ooh, hi, Billy. Little. So Billy did this and Excellent said. I lived behind this beautiful adobe church when I was a young child back in the 60s. It's St. Francis de Paula, uh, de Paula Mission in the, mm -hmm. in the small southern New Mexico village of Tularosa. I know what you're talking about. Okay. I didn't attend services there, but I grew up daily hearing the beautiful church bells. This painting uh. brought back many happy memories of my childhood. I think that's a really cool painting. I love that. That is wonderful. I can even hear the bells. I love that. Was there any, was there a question on, uh, to do anything with the painting or no, just to share? This was just sharing. Thank you for sharing. A lot of people are just sharing. Both your story of why you painted this and for sharing the painting. I think it's so important to connect, uh, with our artwork. I think that's why doing, uh, commission artwork is so hard for so many artists and is not a good fit for many artists. Because there does need to be an emotional connection and the space that you have to be in to just whip out commissions like requests of people's ideas of paintings that they want is that you have to be at a place where you can detach from the image and then just love the process so much that the image itself does not matter. And that's actually very difficult for 99% of artists. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just not a fun emotional space for most artists. Some artists can sit in it very well, but I think it's a very unique skill to be able to step out of the context. But I love when there's a context or a reason for a painting, or I've been surprised that on the years I'm coming up, I don't know, maybe on 10 years, it's 2020, 20, in 2014, 2024 will be, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be 10 years uh, teaching online on YouTube, not mm -hmm. teaching just generally, but teaching online on YouTube. And, um, I have to say that I feel like even I've grown so much as an artist, but as a teacher, I have been so surprised that I think when I started, I thought, oh, if I do beginner paintings, it, it won't, it, it will not, you know, the, the connection will be deep, but I didn't know how much emotional attachment or meaning each painting would have for me personally. And I think that's been a surprise in my journey is how much of what's going on in the world and that impacts me actually comes into the artwork. Yeah. That's been really nice. So we're gonna we're gonna see about refining, making it a little easier for everybody to submit their stuff. Thank you, everyone. Oh, uh, was the was the what? what so There's what a, happened? So everybody knows. Yeah. What happened? Oh, so technically speaking, there there were some people who had trouble attaching their images. Ah. And so some of the images seemed to not attach, and we're gonna go see find out why. But uh, so here's what we will do. Yeah. All right, because I'm gonna be live again. 
and we will go back and we will figure out what the technical challenge was. We will get with the tech team and we will correct it. I mean, we were receiving images earlier, so we'll have to figure out what was going on with it. Sometimes things mm -hmm. just decide to break at the most inconvenient times in the world of technology. Mm -hmm. We will find out what it is. We will email you guys. You guys resubmit and you guys can be in the next show. Mm -hmm. Does that sound? Yep. Does that sound okay? And I want to thank Billy for sharing your painting. I loved seeing your artwork. I loved Billy's story. I'd love to see more of your paintings. Again, we've got the group. Mm -hmm. So you can always share, but I, li I like to, for you guys to be able to, sh to be here on YouTube with me with a little bit of the light shining on you so you can see the artist and star that you are because your work is very important. And I bet you would be surprised in your own life how much your artwork has touched the people around you. Mm -hmm. I w I'm always surprised by, in my own private life, how much my kids or my husband or my family will have a... Like even John Little has paintings that I've done and he's with my mom who paints mm -hmm. everything, right? But I've done paintings that spoke to him and, and that he had a real, like, he likes all my little fuzzy weird creatures. He loved that and, and they meant something to him and that was like important to me. So you never know how your artwork is impacting the people in your own life. Is there anything else to show or are we just super stuck te technologically? Well, I'm gonna do a refresh. I think we're technologically stuck today. Okay. So we'll email yep. you guys and you can resubmit and then the next one we'll do this again and we're going to stay dogged about this. We're going to keep doing it and uh, hopefully make it part of our art family live show event. I hope you enjoyed doing this painting today. I really did. It was a lot of fun to put together and share with you how you might do that. I love your different takes on it from, you know, a guy out there having accomplished everything and feeling super strong to feeling overwhelmed. Um, no, we're in this together and I so appreciate that we are on planet earth in space together painting. It's kind of, think about that right now in yeah. all the vastness of space, all of us today are painting like astronauts going through space. Yeah. Is that a weird thought? Oh, let's see here. There's a, there's a submission for live painting, but that's a, that was one of our other, it's a bird. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna put the bird up. I'm gonna put yeah, the bird up there. I'll do it. You, if real you quick. go to the trouble of submitting to me, I'm gonna try to show your work. Let me see if I can finish that real quick. I'm I am. I love to feature you guys. Burp. Okay, hold on. Uh, push a button. Switcher. There. <gasps> All right. Oh, the it's <laughs> this is from the hummingbirds. Oh, I love that. I love what you did there. And this is from Alyssa. This is, I don't oh, have a name Alyssa. for the Alyssa. I love it, and your colors are just lovely, and I, I love. There is one of the things that you did manage to really capture here, Alyssa, and I don't know if you know, you may notice this. I always like to tell students what they did right because students are usually pretty tuned in on what they did wrong and totally miss what they were brilliant at. And it's as important to keep the things that you're skilled at as you go through your painting as, you know, work on the stuff that you've got to improve. It's important to know what you're doing right. Does anyone else notice the connection between the two subjects between the two birds of the smaller bird looking up at the bigger bird like in this sort of admir like do you get the energy of the admiration between the two mm -hmm. that that connection between them the way the smaller bird is looking up isn't that wonderful the emotion between the two you captured beautifully and that's one of those elusive ephemeral things in art that we know it when we nailed it <laughs> hopefully and I want you to know you nailed it and it's just one of those things that when it comes together it's like that guy the music youtuber we were watching who like when he would hear a sound that got him excited I so related to what he was doing because he would just be like ah because <laughs> it took over his whole body in joy and doesn't it just take over your whole body in joy when you nail a moment in your painting when you get the connection between the subjects it's just fantastic Jules had shared a whole bunch of, of really pretty paintings that they had, that they had painted, and okay. we're just sort of interested in sharing okay. what they were working on. So I'll go through them. Okay, real quick. Jules. Here's <gasps> one. Oh, that's very atmospheric. I like that. What I mean is that the lines are not hard, and we get the sense of it being not like a crisp, bright day, but it's it's misty, and it's like that feeling in the morning when you're when you're going through a city. And and I love how Jules used diffuse line and uh, muted colors and there's a couple of them here. I'm you know, them. just like that that softness through the piece to create Check. that misting there. That oh, was oh, really... that, oh, man, that well, one that went sideways. sideways. It went sideways on me. Great texture, and I love the red it's, roof and the color. I liked your choice of framing sideways. too. It's not sideways on my 
my thing. Well, it's side, it's, it's a real, it's sideways. It's I liked it. I know. So there's, there's another CV that goes, oh, it does oh, the same thing. And it's, at, okay, so what I'm going to say is turn your head. you are me. No, no. Everyone has, else has to uh, turn their head so we can see it. Uh, Jules is just really nailing atmosphere. Yeah. Nailing it. Nailing it. Missed mood. You got it. You got it. You nailed mood. I, I love it. The cloud bank rolling in on the boat on and, and surrounding the boat about to swallow it whole or, is very dramatic. <gasps> Again, so much mood. But it's sideways. It's sideways. I like it. I like these. We don't a lot. know why it's sideways. And it's, it shows up right side up in my in my images. It's just loading them sideways. I'm it's not loading sure what... them sideways. Look at the blue. That reminds me of Klein blue. So another thing that I really like that Jules did here is that this blue, which you know, is is it reminds me very much in this piece of Klein blue, which is a very powerful blue, um, and and also a great art drama story, which I will share with you in a short. But do you notice that that Jules has taken that blue and put it through the painting, and then the signature, and it's in the wall, in the little far up, in the plate, and then in the signature. And that's what keeps the cup from uh, taking over the whole piece. Huh. Is that distribution of that strong colors. That was fantastic. I like that. Remember to keep those strong, intense colors. You want to put a little bit of their spice around the painting. Put a little bit of their what? Flavor. What? what? A flavor. Yeah, around, around the painting. So it's not like a hot, like if you had a meal and there was like a, just one hot bite. But the rest of the meal wasn't hot. That's alarming, isn't it? That can be jarring. Yeah. Paintings are like that. If you put something that's really visually like, uh, one of the ways that we do that as an artist is we can do something called a mother color. Um, that's where we mix a lot of uh, one color through everything and then leave it out in one spot. And then take some little bits of that surprise color, color surprise through the whole thing. I think that's how my mom words it is, color surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's really what it is, is that sometimes colors are very powerful and they can uh, hold a lot of weight or context in a painting and a lot of meaning. And doing small distribution of them can keep them from taking over the whole. Yeah. I don't know where I put my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, okay. that was a very successful day, and that I appreciated nice, yeah. y'all's time. I will be painting today and doing designs. Um, someone asked earlier, and if you're still here, I hope you're here. I think it was Stephanie asked how often I paint every day. Mm. Or, or maybe how often do I paint? I paint every day. Yeah. And I paint for hours a day. Hours. Because it's it's my full time job. So much. So I'm painting all the time. I'm having to make shorts and design things and um i love doing digital work but uh i like it when i get a chance to like paint everything just like on the canvas and then put it up so like now that we're stable painting every day doing new designs i got some cool drippy lips and i got some fun stuff coming up some uh i've got some back to school stuff coming up for the teachers i really i want i now i'm not only am a teacher i am on the side of teachers and I love teachers, and I've got your back locally. And Ashley, I love teachers, what you guys do. You, you guys give us a brighter future. You're so important. I, mean, I don't know if you're tired or what you're going through, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pro, but about it. So <laughs> those are coming up, and I'm, I'm excited about those. My son asked me to paint uh, um, a painting of, a, of a, a tank that's abandoned in a field of sunflowers because mm -hmm. He's what is it he's into? I don't He plays a, he plays a couple he plays tank games and does some uh he really is fun. He wants it for his room, so you get to paint it too. Yeah. But <laughs> but just so you know he, maybe you have a little person in your life who's into the same things my son is. He really liked it when in World War Two the French army went and took all the German tanks and turned them against him. And so he's got a big fan of that particular part of uh of, of, of France's resistance to Germany. So, so. He, he found this uh, uh, photograph. It's, it's, it, I cannot find the original um, uh, author for it or any information on them. Um, I think it may even be in the public domain. Uh, I'm going to just like do it light on my show because that because I'm not entirely sure of its providence. It does seem to be in the public domain, but I have to verify that. Either way, we're going to do it. It'll either be fan art or... Um, or yeah. Yeah. Or officially, I don't know, but it's going to be a fun one with it when we do something mm -hmm. unexpected. That'll be recorded because it's a, it's a big one and I, it's got lots of straight lines. You know me in a straight line. 
Guys, thank you so much for your time. I want you to be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. I'll see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.